Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I'm going to utilize your comments and questions to channel George Michael. Thank you so much for responding to the post that I put out there for questions for this particular channeling session. I love George Michael, you guys. His energy is so genuine. He's kind but he's not super chatty. And so I thought, hey, I'm gonna ask you, the fans and the viewers here at Above Life Channel that love George Michael to submit some questions. And so you did, so thank you. By the way, I posted that at Facebook, Above Life Channel, and on the community tab at Above Life Channel on YouTube. All right, so let's get started. I have my computer up here. Make my questions really big so I can see them. <laughs> and let's invite Mr. George Michael, come on in. Hello, hello, love, he says, hello. He says, hello, love, hi, nice to see you. He's got glasses on, you guys, and really short hair. Nice to see you, nice to see you again, yes, yes. Have a seat. He says, I understand some fans have some questions. Yes, they do. Oh my gosh, I just want to smile. He has so much love. You have so much love. You guys, seriously, oh my goodness, my cheeks hurt. I want to smile so much. Oh, you're just so sweet, George. <laughs> you're so sweet. Okay, so let's start with the questions. I hope you guys can feel them. You feel so good. Oh, it feels so good. Okay, I'll try to stop smiling life purpose of last oh this is serious okay so i guess we're getting in like boom boom okay now let's let's ask a little gentler question i haven't read the questions ahead of time you guys so all right so let's see george has always seemed like a highly intuitive kind person and of course amazingly talented what were his life lessons and will he be back anytime soon? What would you say to that, George? He says, thank you. Thank you for the compliments. He says, thank you. Life lessons, oh, that's a tough one. There are so many, there are so many. It is very difficult to live in the public eye. It does feel as though your life is in a fishbowl. It, becomes things get rather out of hand and it's easy to get caught up in the the sort of imagery around you that other people um, um portray of you he's saying like it's like projecting on you like other people around him and his entourage and stuff projected upon him like his fame his fame his fame and not family he's saying not family not family but other people around him were not as we're kind of we're high on the fame and he says it's easy to get lost in that and to lose your way and i would say that that happened to me that happened to me a, a few times a few times i still had ample opportunity, plenty of opportunities to, to sing and to perform and, and for that I am grateful. And the private struggles that I had are things that you only saw glimpses of on, you know, the TMZ, the gossip, the gossip magazines and Daily Mail and things and it's it feels so much worse than that. You would think that if you see a, um, an article, a, a really scathing article about yourself or something really um, horrific or horrendous that you don't want other people necessarily to know about you, particularly the family, that's the hardest part is to protect. The, there's a desire, you know, a want to protect the family and, and you can't do that when you're in the public eye, it, it doesn't, it's just not possible. And so although something printed could hurt me and, and my career, it's, it's much more devastating to me, the effect on my family. And that, that is more painful than anything I was dealing with personally. 
I know that might be, that could be uh, difficult to, to believe that for others, but for me, i very close with my family and that was a part of my life that I, I just, I couldn't protect them fr from myself in a way, knowing that I hurt them. That was in part probably the most difficult for me. I, I would say that. You guys are here, it's really kind of solemn, really kind of reflective. Like he comes in, throat chakra is activated and then heart throat and heart, which is speaking your truth and communicating truly and acknowledging that sometimes we don't have words to describe how we're feeling emotionally and that is something that we, as people, get, if we can recognize that, we don't have words to express, to, to accurately communicate to others how we're feeling, that means that we can, what we can do is create space for ourselves to feel those feelings in a healthy way and then to share them in a way that provides understanding with others, whether it's with a counselor, a life coach, a friend, a trusted friend, a mentor, or with a close family member. All right, um, the second part of this question, George, is are you, planning to come back anytime soon? Not really, he says, not really, no, no plans. No plans at this time. He says, I, I don't know. I don't know what the future will bring. I don't know, he says, I don't know what the future will bring. And I personally, as Bridget, I'm not sure that you don't know, but I don't know that you can tell us because I've had this experience a couple of times with other afterlife celebs. So, so it's cool, we're cool, we're cool. All right, were you able, Okay, so that was N-I-K-S, Nick's and Nick S that asked those questions. And then we have um, Brandy who asked, were you able to see your mom? He says, um, he's with his mom, but I'm confused about the timing of her death. Did she die after he died? After he died? Because he's making me feel like she's really young. Um, oh wait, if this is interesting, okay, wait, 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 there's a young person, oh, oh, yeah, okay, I know what this is, okay, I'm a little weird, you guys, because I haven't channeled for like a week and a half, and now I get to channel, so I'm really excited, <laughs> my energy is like a big bottle of pop, ready to, bleh. okay, I remember your sister passed away. That's who I see, somebody really young with you, like younger, like younger than your mother, but I see your mother with you as well. So yes, his mother and his sister are with him. Now I remembered that his sister died and that's how I was able to make the connection. If I'm doing a, a session with you and somebody comes in from the afterlife, it, it's so much easier to be able to say, hey, I see a younger person, blah, 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 and then you're able to make the connection so I know who it is in case you're trying to get to your mom and really it's your sister that's showing up first or your aunt or something, because that happens all the time. Yeah, mediumship is kind of complicated for me. It's like I need people to wear name tags, man. All right, with celebrities it's easy because you can see them, you know who they are. It's all the rest of the stuff that's complicated. Okay, so um, yes, thanks for the question. Yes, he was with his mom. He is with his mom. All right, so with his mom, with his mom. Okay. Was he able to see his mom? It says with your mom. You say with your mom, not see. Okay, sorry guys, I just, I have to find another question here. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh yeah, so Patty says, next question. Patty asks, did he meet his sister when he crossed on Christmas 2019? Okay. All right, so that just affirms. Okay, so yes, he's with the sister. There you go. All right, um, there's more. Karma asks, I'd like to ask, 
his perspective on the gay controversy. I mean, I love him either way. And how does the spiritual realm feel about it? What advice does he give for anyone who is gay and wants to speak their truth, even though they may be there? They may be outcasts in society. Oh, interesting. So how do you feel about this? Um, can you talk about this, this particular subject for you being gay? It wasn't something that I felt was pu to be public. I really felt that it was my business, my privacy. It's not that I was ashamed. It was more, more that my family would be um, quite upset and bothered by it for the same reasons that you, you point out because of society. And it's not something I necessarily hid for my own good, but for more so for theirs. Um, advice, I, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm not sure that, that I'm the person that should be giving advice. I can only say what, I don't regret the way I chose to keep my, my sexuality private. I don't regret that. It, it's a different time. It's a, it's a much different time. It's much easier and more widely accepted now for, for people to be themselves, to love who they choose to love in, in all, all the different ways. And I think, that, I think that's a beautiful thing. It seems as though there's more um, torture inside of us, inside of the, the individual person, than there is actually in coming out or in, in sharing um, openly the, um, the relationships that you're in. I, it's, su it's such a different, it's such a different time. It's, it's, so, it's so different now, it's so different now. There is much more acceptance then, then and and that's not then that's not an excuse that's not really an excuse I, i'm not trying to to um explain why i didn't um, share that i i feel like it is a personal choice or decision and you have to remember at that time uh, i had a career that was very important to me and a family that i wanted to to keep um, protected as well I don't, I, I think that there's a perception that I suffered because I was gay. And the only suffering that, that came about was in not being able to open, openly love and be in relationship in a way that others could be because of my um, professional status or my, he's saying not professional status, because of my, I'm gonna use the word fame because of his fame. I didn't have the same sort of um, options as others might have because of being in the public eye, is what he's saying. It's more, it's a bigger deal for me, for, for people who are famous than it is for, for average, um, um, for the average like, Joe on the street kind of thing, the average Joe kind of a thing. All right, so, and he says, but he's saying it's not, there's, I think, a misperception that he was ashamed of being gay. There's not that. He's not having, he doesn't have that. He doesn't necessarily feel like he would be um, necessarily judged by the public, but his family is the part that, and it's not even about being accepted by his family, you guys. It's about his family having to be, having to deal with, his being gay that it's it's really not like he gets me the feeling that his family would love and accept him but because of their belief systems their values and potentially their religion he there would have been a um, a lot of friction for them and with their family and this and groups and friends and things like that and it would have been difficult for them and so that's really what he's showing but but people have this perception I think that he felt bad or ashamed but that's not the case he's, he's not showing me that that's not the big um, issue in regards to this okay all right thank you karma that's a good question all right so 
Sarah asks, let's see. I would like to ask George, was it, what was it like for you when you left your body and entered into the other realm? I'm so interested in what it feels like when our soul is able to spread its wings and fly when we leave our bodies. All right. Oh, there's another part of that other question too about um, the spirit and gay, being gay or um, that I'm remembering from the last question too that, that I have a video that I, where I talk about gender and spirituality. I can't remember off the top of my head what the name of it is, but if I can find it, I will post it. It's on Above Life channel. It's probably under my questions and comments playlist. I'm responding to your questions playlist. So I'll see if I can find it and I'll post that just for the, the person who asked that before. Okay, so Sarah wants to know about what did it feel like to leave your body and move into the other realm? Sort of like a dream, like a dream. Like, like when you sleep and, and you can't really feel your body, you know, your, your hands and your arms sort of fall asleep. It, it feels like that. It, at least for me, it felt like that. I think there's this, um, it's like a dream. It's like being in a dream. You know, when you have dreams and you're not in your body and you can look down and see your body like that, that's how it felt for me. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure it would be quite different for others from what I've been told. I think that the experience is probably unique for you. It may be unique for you, but for me, that's that's what it felt like. It didn't. I didn't really feel like this incredible sense of freedom or like I was flying. I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really um, have that uh, awareness. I just felt really warm and loved and accepted and very very peaceful but also very joyful at the same time i felt it was more of the sensory the the feelings of it as i became more aware that i wasn't in a body there was not the uh connection to the 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 body anymore it was it's just it's hard really hard to explain it it's a sensory it was a sensory experience for me okay thank you <clears throat> All right, so let's see what else we got here. Okay, Dee Dee asks, you, or she actually shares, let's see, what a brilliant energy. Oh, she says, shares what a brilliant energy you are with a sense of humor and just pure love. Oh, but then she says, I don't have a specific question. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see. Amy asks, what would you do differently in, in your life if you could? There isn't really, um, there, we don't really have that. He says, there isn't really that. I don't really feel a, I don't really feel a, a, a he's not saying attachment. I would use the word attachment, but he's saying a connection to regret or uh, a need to redo anything. I don't really feel that I have a, a, a lot of peace about my life. I, I have a lot of peace and, and an acceptance of, of being in spirit now. Good question, Amy, thank you. Let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. I don't know though, it's kind of, oh, whoa, 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 it's gonna start talking, I'm gonna start talking. Uh, okay, I had to close it. Uh, all right, thank you so much for your questions. Yeah, I just closed it out now, so yeah, oops. All right, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, the question actually, so as, as I was starting to read the question, it was about, um, George, the relationship between the British tabloids and celebrities has been very volatile, especially since the death of you know Princess Diana and such. And there's been a lot of of pressure and um, almost like being hunted by the the um, media in in Britain is what this person was asking about. How do you feel about that? And do you see that changing anytime soon? You guys, every time I talk to him, it's like, it's a little 
tricky to bring the words out of the heart chakra, the heart space. It's interesting. I haven't felt like that before. It's, it's interesting. Whew. I think there's a lot of healing, you guys. There's a lot of, he said, there's a lot of um, resistance in the heart. He says there's a lot of resistance there. There's a lot of um, anger and grief. Um, collect as a community collectively by humanity and that's what you're feeling Bridget he says that's what you're feeling is that oh wow okay so I'm gonna try to tap into your energy George the things that you see that gain momentum like the stories the press they are a they're not an anomaly they are also not an accurate representation of what the state of the world is. It is, however, an accurate reflection or depiction of how you are feeling, how individuals are feeling, and how then collectively in community people are feeling, which is, is quite disturbed. It's unsettled. People are feeling unsettled. And, but that is a natural process. That's a natural a sense of of, of humanity, when it we overturn things, we have to overturn things, and there is a time of chaos in order to be able to bring in some new life, a new sense of reality, and that is that that is really what you're feeling now. That's what you're that's what you're you're wanting that to be different, but it's just a natural state of the change that is occurring and it reflects what you're seeing, it reflects the, the strength of the desire for change because the fears are being talked about and they're being brought up and that's the only thing that you're seeing and you have to look deeper to see the good and the love, the kindness and the more you desire to look deeper to see that, to find that, the stronger that will be and the bigger it will become. And that growth, that undergrowth will turn over the negativity and it will allow for a new beginning, a fresh start. But it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not the, it's not, it is, it is in some ways the crumbling of society. And that's not such a bad thing. It might feel a little scary, a lot scary because of the uncertainty, but, but there's so much that can be gained in times of uncertainty because the rules are changing because there is a, a call for creative um, expansion and growth, really. So that you're actually in a good time. It doesn't feel that way. I know it doesn't feel that way but you're in a good time. There, there's a lot of, a lot to be gained here. There, there's a lot here, a lot. And there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good. Oh, George, now that's the energy I love from you. Oh my gosh, I love that energy. You guys, let's breathe in that heart space energy and let's clear our throat chakra and just allow for room for new growth for the expansion of kindness, of goodness, for all of us. All right. Oh, George, it's such a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you so much for showing up, my dear. I would love to speak with you again and get some more questions for you again. I have a video called You Choose the Channel. You guys can go ahead and um, post more comments or questions for George Michael in the You Choose the Channel video here at Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope we've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. It's your life after all. So live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching.